Obviously, no sponsor is gonna expect you to open up a video with, this product isn't for everyone. But that's the truth, which doesn't change the fact that the Nebula Capsule 3 Laser from Anchor, who sponsored this video, is super cool. This is a battery-powered projector, and not just any projector, a battery-powered laser projector that'll get you 300 nits of brightness, up to two and a half hours of battery life, and it comes in a handheld form factor that is literally the size of some Bluetooth speakers that I've seen. So if you're going camping, I guess it's more of a glamping trip at this point, or you just wanna quickly and easily set something up, whether it's that the kids are having a sleepover, or you need to quickly set up a presentation, this is going to have you covered. In terms of accessories, it comes with a power adapter and a USB-C power cable, and this appears to be, oh, right, that makes sense, a remote. It runs Android 11, and if the icons on the box are anything to go by, uh, <laughs> it has support for Chromecast, Dolby Audio, and perhaps most importantly, Google Play Store. Now that might not seem like that big of a deal, having support for the Play Store on an Android you know, TV device, but I've run into issues time and time again with these kinds of battery powered projectors where they do not have proper Play Store access, which means that getting apps like Netflix that you might want on a projector can require tedious workarounds at best and at worst not work at all. My hope is that we won't run into anything like that because that would be really awkward since again, this is a sponsored video. <laughs> No! <laughs> uh, trying, to, <laughs> trying to get the battery compartment open. Uh, two triple A's should get us going here. We've got power, microphone, Google Assistant button, navigation buttons, home, back, and settings, as well as what appears to be volume up and down. As for the unit itself, it's 1080p, has a built-in camera that's gonna help us with auto keystone. And moving around to the back, we've got an IR sensor, pairing button, power, an auxiliary input, three and a half mil, HDMI input, and type C for power. Ooh, this is fun. Got a threaded insert that appears to be quarter inch on the bottom, so you could mount it to a stand if you wanted, but you don't have to. You can just plunk it on the table like that, and you're pretty much ready to go. Ooh, this is cool. I forgot about this. The camera doesn't just do auto keystone, it does auto focus as well. So it'll actually use machine vision to say, okay, yeah, your image is in focus or it's blurry and fix it for you. It's kind of wild how small this thing is. One of these and two of their flare tower Bluetooth speakers would actually be like a sick movie theater in, a, in an underarm bag setup. Oh wait, I don't have an HDMI. Well, I don't really need an HDMI input anyway, do I? No, nope, not really. Okay, cool. Wait, I didn't even need to plug it in. It's battery powered. What am I even doing? Oh, and I didn't even show you all the controls on the top. You got what? And is this power? Or are these capacitive? There's definitely back and navigation. Hello? Buddy? Power's on the back. You, you've seen the power button. Oh, wait. Oh. oh, well, it's almost certainly on now because these seem to be lit. Oh. Yep. Oh. <laughs> Hi, uh, do never look directly into a laser projector. Fortunately, this one isn't like really bright because it's meant to be battery powered. So I'm not blind. This is actually very cool. Watch this. Blurry. Boom, focused. Now, something I want to know is if I put it somewhere uneven, is it just gonna... Come on, baby, can you do it? It tells you to block, you're blocking the camera. Oh, I'm in the way of the camera. Oh, for crying out loud. Okay, fine, 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 fine. I mean, honestly, you never want Keystone if you can avoid it anyway, but I just wanted to see the capabilities. So I'm gonna go find something uneven. Oh, it's a very saggy binder. There's almost nothing in it. Crap, this may not work. I think it did it, but let's get the test pattern up a little more permanently before we really evaluate it. Quickly set up with your Android phone. Oh, cool, okay, sure. Oh, wow, I didn't even have to do any of that. It just prompted me. I mean, to be clear, any Android TV will do this same thing. It's just nice when it actually works. <laughs> oh, cool, there's a dedicated button for autofocus and key. Oh, right, right. That, oh, right, that button I glossed over earlier above the Google Assistant button. We've got power, microphone, Google Assistant button. You can use it as a Bluetooth speaker. All right. Wow, it's got four stars in the Play Store. Any companion app for a piece of hardware that's like to configure it almost invariably has like two stars. What are even happening right now? Oh, I have a mouse. That is actually kind of cool. The number of times that I have wished that I had something like this on my Shield TV, many. 
Oh, no, that was volume. No, do, but, 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 let's uh, undo that. Yep. Okay, I opened the settings. It's a little laggy, a little laggy on the volume control. Oh, no, 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 no. We've darkened our room a little bit now. This is still not dark, dark. Like if you uh, point over there, we've got ambient light coming into the office, but we want to give it a reasonable chance, right? Because it's laser, even though the brightness isn't really high, because the darks are so dark, you actually end up with a reasonably vibrant image, even with a little bit of ambient light. Is it playing the same clip again? <laughs> It was Song of the Moon here, previewing, okay. I did not even know that the Android TV YouTube app had audio previews. That's extremely obnoxious, Google. Please no. I'm an expert. No way, it's got eARC? You can hook this thing up to a sound bar? Oh, how much storage does it have? 16 gigs, okay. Of which four is taken up, I'm assuming, because it says there's 12 available. And right, I wanted to go to the Play Store. Let's get Twitch in there. Where the devil do you get more apps? Apps, hello? Get more apps. Sick. You've probably noticed that we're not even trying to project on this whole, like, what is this, 100 inches or 120 inch screen? That's because that would be kind of ridiculous for a 300 lumen projector. But this is more realistic. This is probably in the neighborhood of around 65, 70 inches and exactly the kind of thing that you could project on the side of your windowless panel van when you're at a remote campsite. Overall, pretty responsive. Uh, this is cool though. It's not just IR. Once you're paired, you don't have to be pointed at it. That's very, very good. Let's fire up a demo clip from Dolby. Oh, sure, audio pass through, why not? I'd love to see what it can do in complete blackness, actually. Sorry, people. Actually, don't close those blinds just yet. This is like very usable. It's not cheap, it's like 800 bucks, but this is very usable. And we haven't even tried out the speakers yet. I would expect, haven't actually heard them yet, but I would expect that Anchor's experience building Bluetooth speakers and other personal audio products would help them out a lot here. Ah, oh, we might have to pick a lower bit rate. Now you would obviously never sit right next to it. You'd sit back here behind the projector and to Anchor's credit, they actually have the speaker firing backwards. I don't even have this turned up all the way. And again, if you temper your expectations, you know, if you don't expect it to compete with a 7.4.2 Atmos setup, this is very usable. It is amazing what laser does for the perceived contrast of a projector. If you gave me 300 lumens of LCD projector, it would not look like this. To my eye, it's fairly obvious that Anchor's got the greens pumped up a little bit too high, but again, this isn't the kind of product that I'm expecting perfect color accuracy out of or anything like that. What I really wanna see is if we could go bigger on the screen if we made it darker in here. Do you wanna go ahead and, and kill all the ambient light and let's see if we can fill this screen? I'm not gonna knock this thing over. Oh! Sorry. Ooh. Whoops, 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 whoops. Oh, I ruined it. I ruined all the things. Okay, it's definitely dimmer, but is there any doubt that it's usable? It does appear to be playing back in HDR. Yeah, 80 megabit per second ain't happening. Not over this Wi-Fi connection. So it does support HDR, but smartly, they're not putting a ton of emphasis on it in the marketing. That is good. That's very responsible Anchor, or Nebula by Anchor, excuse me. Man. If we were actually in a pitch black environment, cause we still aren't, <laughs> it's like not bad. No rainbow effect, cause there's no DLP. Like, look at that. Yeah, it's not, it's not bright, obviously. They're definitely processing it a little bit to get the contrast as high as it is, but it's not totally distastefully done. Huh, okay. I don't know what else there is to say other than this thing's kind of sick. Remember, it's battery powered too. We didn't really talk about that that much, but we are absolutely still in movie watching mode here and we're completely untethered. Movie ceiling. Movie Linus. And you can get this movie t-shirt, lttstore.com. <laughs> the best looking <laughs> movie t-shirt I've ever seen. Nice. <laughs> Again, it's not for everyone, but if you're the customer, you know who you are, and you're probably liking what you see. We're gonna have it linked in the video description. Subscribe to Short Circuit.